We sailed on the Norwegian Joy for five nights and gathered some tips and tricks. So join us as we review our best recommendations to make the most of your Norwegian Joy cruise. Today on This Happy Place. Hi, Hi friends. friends. Well, we're back. <clears throat> uh, we made it through the cruise, we survived. That's great. If you haven't watched our cruise vlog series, I will put the first embarkation day video up in the corner and they will all be linked in the description down below. So definitely go check those out because you'll get some idea of what we are talking about today. You know, there's a lot of similarities between the Joy and the Encore and we have previously sailed on the Norwegian Encore as well. So if you missed that series, go check those out back in 2021. But there are some similarities and differences that are worth sharing with all of you. So let's get right into it. Number one, this one is a similarity to the Norwegian Encore, but it held true again on this cruise on the Norwegian Joy. And this one is specifically the Garden Cafe and where to sit. The Garden Cafe is the buffet on both of these ships and it is located all the way at the top. Mm -hmm. Yep, deck 16, pretty much as far forward as you can get. The great thing about it is it wraps all around from port all the way forward to starboard. And we have found that for the most part, when people come into the garden cafe, they will get their food and they'll go to whatever, whatever table they can find. And that leaves a lot of space at the back. Typically there's many more open tables at the back of the garden cafe. And when I say back, don't get confused. I mean, forward of the ship. It's forward on the ship, back of the garden cafe. There's everything you need back there. They got bathrooms, they got their own ice cream machine, they got their own coffee machine. And the best part, the observation lounge, which we'll talk about in a minute, is right below the garden cafe. So you can view out the windows of the garden cafe through those big, tall, two-story windows of the observation lounge and see where the ship is headed. And just a side note, my two favorite stations of the whole buffet, which are the Asian and the Indian stations, are in the back, right near that section too. Very convenient. Mm -hmm. So yeah, head back there if you're trying to beat the crowd or just find your own little secluded space to sit and watch what's coming towards you without having to fight for a seat in the observation lounge. Next, number two. This one is about the observation lounge. This is one of our favorite places to spend time on the ship, especially on sea days, if you just want to see what's coming towards you outside. What I have to say about this is while their seats can be hard to find, if you don't get there early enough, there are several food stations in the observation lounge. Towards the very back, or again, forward on the ship, the food is typically there until 11 or 11.30. Light snacks, some sandwiches, fruit, pastries, wraps occasionally, that kind of thing. But if you find yourself fighting for a seat in the garden cafe, or you just don't want to go to one of the main dining rooms for lunch, the observation lounge is an excellent place to grab lunch and be away from the crowds. If you're really struggling to find a seat in the garden cafe, you could even grab a plate up there and bring it down to the observation lounge since it's only one floor below. Definitely. For lunch, if you plan to eat lunch in the observation lounge, just know that it, the food does go away around 11.30, so it will have to be an earlier lunch and it comes back around 2.30, so you could always grab an early dinner or late lunch there as well before moving on with the rest of your day. Or just snacks or a second lunch. Or second snacks. <laughs> Number three to go along with dining and starting in the garden cafe is that you are going to want to check your app and specifically the Freestyle Daily, which you'll also have a paper version of because each night in the garden cafe for dinner, it is a different theme. And I didn't know this until a couple of days in, so we missed some of the first day's themes, but there was an Italian night, there was yeah. an Asian night, and it was nice because the food changed. It wasn't the same food every single evening in the buffet. We ate at the buffet a lot in this cruise. Oh, yeah. And that was really, really cool. And I wish I would have known the whole time that you could find the theme for that night. And going along those lines, that Freestyle Daily is going to be really important because it's going to tell you the times that each restaurant is open for each meal. So for instance, on our particular sailing, the local would close at 11.30, 12 for breakfast and then not reopen again 
proceeding for lunch until 12.30. So we walked up at noon one day trying right. to get lunch. Because that's when the other restaurants on the ship open. And they weren't seating anyone. So we also had that happen. We, we eat dinner at five o'clock and we went to taste and they didn't open until 5.30 every single night. Taste and Savor didn't open until 5.30. But if we would have looked, the Manhattan Room opened at five every night. So it's just really important to check those times and plan accordingly. And number four, this one is about the internet package on board, at least this cruise. Can't say that this is the same on all cruises, but this is the first time we've noticed it happening. As you move further into the cruise, those otherwise costly internet packages become discounted or prorated. You don't pay for the days of the internet package you didn't use. So, if you know you're not going to use the internet on the first day when you board the ship and you're at port for the majority of the day, don't buy it till the second day. Save yourselves a little bit of money that you can use on a cocktail or something. Jake bought the internet package before we got on board and did you pay full price for it? I got a discount through the website, you know, when you buy it, but I, I definitely paid for every single day of internet that I used. And I will say that up on the screen right now, I took a screenshot of an offer I was given when I went to redeem my free 75 minutes with the free at sea package. And it was discounted even on the first day. <laughs> because our 36 hours in Bermuda for this cruise was turned down to eight and we had an extra full day at sea, I bought the package for myself on day three and if I'm remembering correctly, I think I paid $15 for it. For So that was day three, four, and five. I paid like $90 for the entire cruise. Yeah, it was very yeah. discounted and I was happy for that, but I felt bad for you. Yeah, it's okay, yeah. Save yourself a little money. If you know you're not gonna use the internet till later in the cruise, wait till later in the cruise to buy it. It's not like it's gonna run out. Yeah, and it doesn't hurt anything because if it's full price, you can decide for or against that. Number five. This one is about a, I'll call it secret, but it's really just a secluded spot on the ship that you can go to escape the crowds and have some comparatively peaceful time high up where you can see the entire ocean around you. It is located portside aft on the ship deck I, 17? I called it 17 and a half in the vlogs. Yeah. You kind of have to go up a flight of stairs. You're basically overlooking the uh, racers where the go-karts are and there's very rarely anybody there. It's behind the rear stack of the ship, so it's protected from the wind and some of the sound of the wind and everything going on on the pool deck below you. Plus, it's super fun to just stand there and watch the go-karts. Yeah, there were a couple benches up against that, that yeah. stack, so we would just sit up there. We had our kid with us, and we could let him kind of just toddle around up there and not be in anyone's way. And I really liked it up there too. And it was also very, very, very windy up there on our bad weather day at sea. Oh yeah. Got some, got some fun, fun times up there. <laughs> and number six going along with the go-karts is that if you know you want to race the go-karts, book it as soon as you get on the ship. We didn't book as soon as we got on the ship. On our first day at sea, we went, oh, you know, we'll book it on our last day at sea. And then we had an extra day at sea and we said, oh, we'll just do it today. And then we went to book it and there weren't any spots available until the evening, which we didn't have available. And we said, okay, we'll book it for the last day. And then we had terrible weather the last day and there were no outdoor activities at all. So we didn't get to do it again. We didn't do it in Alaska and we didn't do it on this trip. And so I'm thinking if we ever sail with Norwegian again, I'm going to get on the ship and just walk to the go-karts because we keep missing out on it. So if you know you wanna do something, just go and book it and book it early. It's better you book it early. If it's canceled early, you can reschedule it for later in the, in the trip. Absolutely. It just gives you greater flexibility. Yeah, just, just get it done. <laughs> and number seven, bringing it back to the dining scene. This one is about booking those dining reservations, those specialty dining reservations early. I recommend it if you can get it done in time. If you can't, don't fret. I ran into a scenario on the app when I was trying to book a reservation for us where there was exactly one seat left in a restaurant. I was trying to book it for Taylor and I. I called Norwegian and said, is this really the case? And they said, why yes. 
Uh, there is in fact only one seat left. But don't worry, because typically Norwegian only opens about 20% of their reservable spaces in the, re in the specialty dining uh, restaurants for pre-booking. So we just went on the first day. It was one of the first things we did when we boarded the ship. Went to... Teppanyaki was yeah, where yeah. it was located. The hibachi restaurant is where you could go and book your dining. But not just for teppanyaki. They had stations there for every specialty dining restaurant, I think, or at least most of them. I think they just had multiple stations and you just picked which was ever open. Yeah. And they could book for any restaurant. It was very easy. You just told them generally what time you wanted to eat and where or just what time you wanted to eat and they would tell you what's available. They were super helpful. We got the time slots and the locations we wanted and it ended up working out. If you are early diners like we are though, the specialty restaurants other than Tempanyaki don't open until six o'clock or at least they didn't on our sailing. So the only one we could really do with a baby and the whole family was Tempanyaki. But just be aware that you may need to do a first dinner. <laughs> Yeah. Before your second dinner. That's a good point. That's a that's a free tip. That's an extra one that we threw and we're not even going to charge you for it. But what you can do is go down and hit the subscribe button if you haven't and make sure you hit the like button as well. It does help the YouTube algorithm find us and get videos like this to more people like you who are interested in getting the most out of their vacation. Number eight. This is more of a personal tip. Definitely not a necessity, but we found that it helped us a lot. On this particular sailing on the Norwegian Joy, there were no can liners in any of the uh, trash cans in the staterooms. I think that's pretty common on really any cruise ship or even hotel anymore. It makes a lot of sense. I get it. But it does make it a little difficult to throw away things that might stain or be particularly odorous. So we just brought a bunch of used grocery bags and lined the cans ourselves. Ended up working out great. We were in a situation that we were throwing away diapers, mm -hmm. and we also didn't want to have to have our stateroom attendant have to deal with those. Mm -hmm. It just felt a little cleaner to be able to wrap them up in the bags, but I was happy a couple other times that we had them just for food and different items that would have been kind of gross just sitting in the empty trash can. For sure. Like feminine products in the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, because like you can only wrap those up so much. Oh yeah, like we threw away so much food that like Miles didn't want to eat and stuff. It would have just been like sitting in there getting what crusty and like eating a stuff. banana. Like oh, God, your whole room would smell like banana. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Sidetracked. <Yeah. laughs> we're we're really impressed by our own tips and tricks. Bananas and feminine products. Yeah. Right. Number nine. If you are picking your own room number make sure that you look at the deck plans first. We were in a little bit of a unique situation that we booked this cruise very last minute, like within two weeks of oh, the yeah. sailing, yeah. and had very limited number of rooms to choose from. But what we didn't realize when we were pretty much assigned the room that we got was it was directly on top of the Cavern Club. And if you're sailing on the Joy, the Cavern Club is the bar lounge that the Beatles tribute band plays in most nights. And when the Beatles tribute band is not playing in the Cavern Club, there is four hours of karaoke. Mm that you can hear very clearly in room 9272. <laughs> Those floors are not thick. They do not soundproof well. And also when we were out on the balcony, directly below us was the outdoor oh, yeah, cavern yeah, club. The waterfront. <laughs> <laughs> so it was not a peaceful room. Mm -hmm. It was, I love the rooms on Norwegian ships. I think yeah. they're wonderful, but the location was not ideal. It was, yeah, it just was very loud. We brought a sound machine luckily, and that did help drown it out. But I'll never forget laying in bed, just listening to the sweet, sweet sounds of yellow submarine trying to fall asleep. Okay, and number 10. If you've made it this far in the video, if you've been with us long enough, you know that we love to travel. We are not new to traveling, we are somewhat new to cruising. But I have found that there's one thing you can do to make yourself feel more safe, more secure, and generally more at ease when you're sailing that is no more difficult than 
paying for the cruise itself, and that is using a travel credit card. If you are the kind of person who is disciplined enough to pay off your balances regularly so that you don't start accruing interest, a travel credit card will make things a lot easier. For one, it will give you points that you can redeem for flights to wherever you're going so you save money on flights. There are many credit cards out there that give travel credits just for having them annually. And most travel credit cards have some kind of insurance associated with them. So for example, if you book a trip and it happens to be canceled, as long as you booked it with a travel credit card that gives you that insurance, you can be refunded for that cost. Same with your luggage. Let's say you, I don't know, board a plane, luggage falls off as they're loading it, doesn't make it where you're going. <laughs> I thought it was gonna fall off the plane, like in midair. <laughs> well, we saw this happen, right? There was somebody on our sailing of the Norwegian Joy who unfortunately did not get their luggage at all the entire time they were on. And while it doesn't help them while they're on the ship at all, as long as you purchased that trip with a travel credit card that offers this, then you can get the cost of that luggage reimbursed to you. We use Chase credit cards. We find that they are among the easiest to use and to get the points for, and the points have some of the best value. So if you're that kind of person, like I said, that can pay off your monthly expenses on your credit cards regularly, and you're interested in getting some of the benefits of having a travel credit card, we do have referral links for our Chase Sapphire Reserve and Chase Freedom Flex down in the description below. Check them out. Okay, so that was 10, but I need to add this one in that I just thought of because I think it's important. There are a lot of people on the Norwegian Joy. It sails with close to 4,000 people, I believe, and the outdoor space on this particular ship is not large. Mm -hmm. So if you are a sunbather, if you are a pool enjoyer, get to the deck early and claim your chair and sit in it all day because they will be full and it can be really, really hard to battle for a prime location. Just consider that if you are one of those lay by the pool all day kind of people, you're gonna wanna grab those chairs early. Good one. Well, that's it for now. We really hope that you found these tips, tricks helpful. We do this every time we cruise. We try to do it any time we do some less than common travel so that we can help you make decisions and decide whether or not that particular type of trip is the thing that's up your alley. If you did like it, please go down and hit the like button, subscribe, because that tells us that we're doing the right thing out here. You're gonna to wanna to subscribe too because this is not our last video about the Norwegian Joy. There is one more coming out and that is going to be a full ship tour that we go through every public deck and explain where it can be found and give you a look at it. And we did this for the Encore and I know that video has helped a lot of people and I'm hoping the joy can be the same way. And until next time, stay, stay magical. magical. Woo, Lulu. What was that? A Taylor call. What did you say? Woo, Lulu. I've never made that sound in my life. Yeah, but you came here, so. <laughs> We sailed on the Norwegian Joy for five nights and gathered some tips and tricks while doing so. We sailed on the Norwegian Joy. Well, if there's any more, you'll see us in like a fraction of a second. Wait, wait, there's more.